Hi hey guys, welcome back. So today we're making a video on uh, Nginx Reverse Proxy. Give me a minute as we try to, to give you a brief description of what we're trying to do. So I'll just switch you over to my little images I made. Okay, this is without the proxy. Now if you see here, this is like my desktop computer. It's on the internet from a different location. So say I want to go test.host, which would be like test.com or example.com if I'm just using .host, for example. So um, so I type into my web browser test.host and my local network, there will be actually a firewall and router and all that, but my computer's DNS is set to 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, which is Google. So when I test in type in test.host, it goes to the DNS server and it tells it, we're looking for test.host. And the DNS server goes through, and if it has that record, it'll send back the IP of test.host. And if not, it'll go out to its own forward or to another DNS server and see if it has it. Well, we're not focusing on DNS right now. So, when we um, type in test.host, host it goes hits the DNS server gets the IP and then once it's got the IP it goes to 10.10.31.200 port 80 is what the browser uses by default unless you specify a different so it goes there and if the port is open on here port 80 it will route that port to a LAN IP address whatever you have set in your firewall rules so, on the LAN side of that firewall, or I mean router, it would send it to 192.168.1.200.80. So, that would be server 1. But if you want to add, like, a second server, say you want to add, like, file server dot test.host, you can't, you would have to open up, like, port 81, and if you want to add another one, you'd have to uh, open up, like, port 82, and so on. So, the reason we would use a Nginx proxy is so you would have. Give me a second. I don't know why this image is the same size. Oops. Okay. I don't know. Give me a second to fix that. Okay. Now we got that fixed. Um. So now how it would do it, same thing, get the IP address from the DNS server, it would hit this IP of the router, and it instead of sending it straight to your file server, I mean your web server, you would send it to the Nginx proxy. So if when the portal 80 is open, you can specify internally, you can have this on like 80.80 .80 or something. I mean port. This don't have to, these servers, file servers don't have to be operating on port 80 because the proxy will make it look like it is if you know what I mean so when you go to test.host this will send it to one dot two it'll send it to your nginx proxy whatever the IP is to your nginx proxy and if you watch my previous video we'll show you it shows you how to install nginx on Ubuntu and it sh my previous videos will show you how to install Apache where you can use nginx for your your web servers. So when it forwards the port 80 over to the, the proxy, it also will attach like a package saying it's going to test.host or file.test.host. So when it does that, it'll hit this, it'll look in the records and says, okay, that needs to go to 192.168.1.200, I mean like 2. So that would be this server. Or if it needs to go to files.test.host, it would be going to this server, and so on. You can add multiple servers. Say you want to go files2, files1. You know, just keep adding servers, because one server ain't going to host a large site. And you're kind of limited on your static IPs that you can have out on the internet. You know, those get expensive. Makes life a whole lot easier just to use a, a proxy. So now we're going to go and set that up. So what we do is we're going to switch over to terminal 
and I'm going to SSH into the Nginx server. So now we're what's in there. Let's see. We need to go to sudo nano and be etc nginx and it'd be site available default. You can set your own like virtual host files here, but we're, we're just going to use the one they give us. You know Before we do that, we're going to just make a backup of this. This is if you want to keep it for later on. So be. I always like keeping backup of the default um, config files they give you, so we're just going to put backup. Oops, and we have to see do that because we're not logged in through it. Okay. So now that we got that set up, we're going to go sudo nano. We're going to go etc. And the next, oops, right. Available default. So now we can pretty much just get rid of all of this. So we just press Control K and it'll cut all the lines out. So first we need to set up the first one, which would be test.host. So we type in server, open and close our brackets, and then we're going to type in listen 80, which is going to be the port your site's hosted on. Let's format that a little bit. And this would be server name and this is going to be test dot host or dot com or whatever your site is and then we're going to type in location this will all be in the description and we're going to put forward slash and close those brackets format that a little bit better so we're going to go proxy and this would be pass HTTP. Now, if you're running these servers encrypted, you'd have to put an HTTPS, but we're not doing that because it's all internal, anyways. You would want to set this, your Nginx proxy, up to work with encryptions. That's a whole other thing. But running an encryptions on your local network ain't going to be too big of a concern, at least I would think. So it would just be like typing in a URL here, but instead it's going to be your IP of it which I'm just going to put the first server I have set up, which is the one we installed in the previous video. I'm going to type proxy. And this is going to be set header. This basically s tells the server, web server that you're forwarding to that you're looking for a domain, so you're setting data in the header. You go host, and that's not correct. And then we're going to put dollar sign host and that. And then we're going to go proxy. And then we're going to set the IP from the person that sent it. Header x. And you can put real. Close that. I probably have somebody spelling. I can't type for it if it's not. So now we put. I'm just going to copy this so we don't have to keep typing that out 100,000 times. And we're going to put x forward or And that, and then we're going to go proxy header x forward, and I have a typo here, I just realized. Let me end that. So now it should be good to go. We're just going to hit control x, yes, save. And then we are going to sudo s restart nginx and we have an error. So just copy this and this should tell us 
and we messed that up. So we'll go see control. Let's go to nano. Okay, what did we mess up? Somewhere I got a typo in this. Under proxy add for variable. So we're just looking for this right here. Okay, so that's not supposed to be like that. There's my typo. And this would be lowercase for it, I believe. Okay. Now we reload it, and we should be good to go. So let's just switch over to the web view. Give me a second to get the web browser. So we have test.host typed in, and this is the page it loaded before. Now we reload this, we get the Apache page. Okay, so now we need to configure the file server. So let's switch back over to the CLI, and we're going to go back in here. I'm going to do this. We're just going to copy this, come down here at the bottom, and then we are going to come up here, and we're going to change a few things. We're going to put files dot test dot host, and we're going to change the IP to free. Okay, now we want to reload nginx, come back here, so we just test that, it still works, and this should give us our file server. So there's just one image on that server. But if you notice, we don't have to come in here and type like port 81. That's just the messy way of doing stuff. So basically you add a different subdomain and it would call for a different server under the same IP. And now if I was to come in here, we'll open a new tab and we'll ping test.host. And you see that is going to tend to, it's going to the one, the nginx proxy that we SSH'd into. Now we kill that and we're going to put files.test.host and it goes to the same IP address. Now if we switch back over to the web view and we type in it, what was it? It was 10.168.1.2. This is the file, the uh, web server and this is would be the file server. So we type in oops dot one six eight dot one dot three and that's what's actually resolving to. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe. See you guys later. Hey guys, my name is Tate. I've been on YouTube since 2012. I've never really taken YouTube too seriously. Like, I would post a video, like, once a year on how to do something. I don't know how my one sharpening video has gotten almost 100,000 views, but recently I would like to try making my YouTube channel into a part-time income. And my AdSense has been removed because YouTube changed their terms and service, and I now need 1,000 subscribers and 400 hours of watch time in the next 12 months. I don't want to sound like I'm begging for subscribers, but if you could please subscribe and like and share my videos, that would really, really help. I'll be trying to post a video like once every week or so, at least, on either a Linux tutorial or just messing around a GIMP or just me messing around the shop or something. So if you like any of that stuff, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos and give me a shout out. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys later.